Good morning. Good morning. And welcome to worship this fifth Sunday after Epiphany. A uh, couple of announcements. Um, reminder that today is uh, Communion Sunday. We'll be taking two offerings. The wooden plate, as you know, is for benevolence, and the regular plate is for regular offering. Uh, printed copies of the newsletter are available in the fellowship hall on the table. There's also a card to sign for uh, Jan Ferguson, who has been ill. Uh, next Saturday is the men's club breakfast. And uh, since we did not meet last month, I will be doing the breakfast, or I should say Rosalie will be making the breakfast. <laughs> so we'll be meeting next Saturday. All other announcements are in the bulletin. Please stand as you are able or call to worship and remain standing until after the glory of country on. Call on the name of God. For God, God has called us by name. name. We are called to share the good news. For, For Jesus, Jesus loves even me. me. We are commissioned to share the knowledge of Jesus' salvation. We, we cannot, cannot keep silent. silent. For the Spirit lives in each of us gathered here. We, we tell, tell the story of Jesus with gladness. The story of Jesus' life and the salvation never grow old. Hymn number 156. I love to tell the story of Jesus and his love. <coughs>
God, the strength of all who put their trust in you, mercifully accept our prayer. And because of our weakness, we can do nothing good without you. Give us the help of your grace, that in keeping your commandments and the great commission, we may please you both in will and deed. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. And now as children of the Lord God, let us boldly pray the prayer of our Lord taught us, saying, Our, our Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as and we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, and deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouths shall show forth thy praise. Praise ye the Lord. The Lord's name be praise. <laughs> Jerusalem, 
and gathers the outcasts of Israel. The Lord heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. The, the Lord determines the number of the stars and gives to all of them their names. Great is our Lord and abundant in power, whose understanding is beyond measure. The Lord lifts up the downtrodden, but, but the casts the wicked to the ground. Sing to the Lord with thanksgiving. Make melody upon the mighty to your God. Who covers the heaven with clouds, prepare rain for the earth, make grass grow upon the hills. The Lord appears to the beasts of the group and to the young maidens that cry. The Lord takes no delight in the might of a horse, nor pleasure in the strength of a runner. But the Lord takes pleasure in the faithful, in those who hope in the Lord's steadfast love. Our second lesson today is taken from 1 Corinthians chapter 6, chapter 9, verse 16 through 22. For when I preach the gospel, I cannot boast, since I am compelled to to preach. Woe to me if I do not preach the gospel. If I preach it voluntarily, I have a reward. If not voluntarily, I am simply discharging the trust committed to me. What then is my reward? Just this, that in preaching the gospel I may offer it free of charge, and so not make full use of my rights as a preacher of the gospel. Though I am free and belong to no one, I have made myself a slave to everyone, to win as many as possible. To the Jews, I became like a Jew, to win the Jews. To those under the law, I became one under the law, though I myself am not under the law, so as to win those under the law. And to those not having the law, I became like one not having the law, though I am not free from God's law, but am under Christ's law, so as to win those not having the law. To the weak, I became weak, to win the weak. I have become all things to all people, so that by all possible means I might save some. I do all this for the sake of the gospel, that I may share in its blessings. Hymn number 591. Thank you. 
God. They went with James and John to the home of Simon and Andrew. Simon's mother-in-law was in bed with a fever, and they immediately told Jesus about her. So he went to her, took her hand, and helped her up. The fever left her, and she began to wait on him. That evening, after sunset, the people brought to Jesus all the sick and demon-possessed. The whole town gathered at the door, and Jesus healed many who had various diseases. He also drove out many demons. But he would not let the demons speak, because they knew who he was. Very early in the morning, while it was still dark, Jesus got up, <coughs> left the house, and went off to a solitary place where he prayed. Simon and his companions went to look for him. And when they found him, they exclaimed, Everyone is looking for you. Jesus replied, Let us go somewhere else, to the nearby villages, so I can pre preach there also. That is why I have come. So he traveled throughout Galilee, preaching in their synagogues and driving out demons. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Let us boldly affirm our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, death, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. This week, the Church prays for the Church in Angora, Italy. Malta, Portugal, San Marino, Spain, and Vatican City. Are there any joys or prayer requests? Okay. We'll be praying for Jan Periton and Jan Hill, <coughs> who are sick also. I'm Kathy Adams, who's very discouraged. We must remember Bob and Jenny as they recover from COVID. Okay. We have a, a friend in Henny that just discovered, his name was Roger, and he just discovered he has esophagus cancer. Mm -hmm. And then I have a joy. I'm celebrating another birthday tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm very thankful. <laughs> if we can just pray for the children and the staff in schools. Many schools are closing because so many staff and children are sick with influenza and strep throat and COVID. And it, um, it just seems to come in waves. Anyone else? The new sign is in. I don't know if y'all noticed it, but it looks great. Let us pray. Loving God, the question was asked, have we not heard? Have we not seen? Have we not believed? And we have heard, O oh Lord, over and over again, how great and wonderful you are. You created the heavens and the earth and all that is in it. And before you, we are like grasshoppers, nothing, insignificant. But in spite of our lowly estate, you love us so much. 
you care for us and sent your son. We thank you for your love, your grace, your forgiveness, and your acceptance of us. Father, we thank you for making us a part of your family. Forgive us when we stray. We ask for your blessing upon your church here in Honorville. Father, we also ask for your blessing upon the church in Andorra, Italy, Malta, Portugal, San Marino, Spain, and Vatican City. Bless those nations, from the big nations to smallest nations. Be especially with Vatican City during these difficult days. <clears throat> Lord, we pray and ask for your blessing upon your church. Father, we also lift up the many who are sick. We hear of COVID and influenza and strep throat in schools and in our community. We think of even members here in our church that are affected. We think of Jen. We think of Bob and Jane. We also think of others who have other illnesses. Be with Jen Periton as she deals with shingles. Be with Roger as he battles his <coughs> cancer. Be with Kathy as she deals with many, many issues. <clears throat> Father, we are your children, and we place our very lives into your hands. And Christ, our Lord, invites to his table all who loves him who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sins before God and one another in the unison prayer of confession. Merciful God, God we confess that we have not loved you with our, with our whole heart. heart. We, we have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors. And we have not heard the cry of me. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love towards us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. As forgiven, unreconciled people, let us offer ourselves and our gifts to God.
and through our ministries, have us may know your love, mercy, and grace. Amen. Isaiah, writing, asked the question, Do you not know? Have you not heard? Has it not been told to you? And the answer to all these questions is, yes, we have been told. We have heard. And we do know about the gospel. The question is, have you not understood and the answer is, unfortunately, many people do not understand. And the answer to have we not understood is, since the earth was founded, from the very beginning, God is so mighty. He's the creator of all that there is. We see both in Isaiah and in the psalm that God created everything that there is. And that compared to him, we are like what? Grasshoppers. Nothing. Insignificant. That no matter how mighty a person is, princes, kings are brought to naught, to nothing. Because if we rely upon our human strength and ability alone, compared to God, it is what? Nothing. In the psalm, the response should be that we should praise God. Quite often we, we miss that. That a part of worship is to what? Praise God. To worship God. To thank God for His love, His grace, His mercy, His forgiveness and acceptance of us. Even though we are not worthy. The reality is, the gospel has been preached since the time of Christ. We see in the gospel, Jesus went first to Simon and Andrew's house. We know Simon better as Peter. And it's a side note, I know it's a side note for all. Many people believe that Peter was the first pope. But in the scripture, we see Peter was what? Must have been married if he has a mother-in-law. And Jesus healed Peter's mother-in-law and then turned around and healed everyone in that village. And then people start looking for him and Jesus pointed out the reason he came was so that he go, could go somewhere else to what? Spread the news. So here is what Jesus replied. Let us go somewhere else to the nearby village so that I can preach there also. The reality is Jesus wanted to spread the good news to where? To everybody. So that they can hear and understand the gospel. But the reality is, just because the gospel is preached and people hear it, does that mean that they all believe and accept God for who he is and worship him? And the answer is no. Paul, in writing to Corinthians, point out that he does everything humanly possible for the Jews, he become what? Jew. For the weak, he become weak. For those under the law, he goes under the law. For those not under the law, he's not under the law. And he points out, I do all this so that I might win some. The reality is, not even Jesus in his preaching 
and going from village to village. Did everybody believe the gospel message concerning the kingdom of God? And the answer is no. Did everybody respond positively to Paul? I'm, I'm sure Paul was a better preacher than I am, and Jesus was the master preacher. The reality is, in our world today, the question is still, have you not heard? And many people can claim, well, I haven't heard it. And so each and every week, we have pastors and churches, different denominations, preaching the gospel message so that people can what? Hear. They can hear it. In our modern technological society, even if they're not physically present, they can watch on TV, they can watch on Facebook, they can watch on YouTube, they can listen to it on the radio. We as ministers of the gospel do anything and everything we possible can, like Paul, so that they can what? Hear the gospel message and believe. We do everything. And as, think about it, when radio came out, people went on the radio. TV came out, they went on TV. Now we have Facebook, we have YouTube, we have all these different things. While in the prison, they even sent cassette tapes and, and CDs to get the gospel message out. Doesn't matter, Jew, Gentile, rich, poor, under the law. Paul says, I become anything and do put up with any circumstance in order to get the gospel message out. I do all this for the sake of the gospel so that they might hear it and believe it. We sang the song, I love to tell the what? Story. The reality as Christians, we should be telling the story so that people cannot say, I have never heard. How can I believe if I've never watched? Let's be realistic. Are some people going to try to use that excuse as, well, I never heard the gospel. That's why I didn't believe it. And it's true. But today we can say, we, like Paul, need to do everything we can to spread the gospel. We, like Jesus, need to go somewhere else. In other words, we don't need to be sitting comfortably just here at church, but we need to go and spread the gospel so that others can hear it, be it at the store or friends. Let's be realistic. The time we spend in church is what? Small compared to the time we spend doing other activities out in the world. <clears throat> Just using myself as an example, be it at the golf course or the pickleball course or at the store or wherever we go. We don't have to be in your face, but as we encounter people, we can share Christ. And his love. So that no one can say. I have never heard. Jesus said. After a night of prayer. Let us go somewhere else. For this reason. I have come. And if we are disciples. Of our Lord Jesus Christ. For that reason. We are also here. To share the gospel. I hope you can not only sing the song, but can truly practice the song that I love to tell the story of Jesus and his love. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our communion hymn will be hymn number 600. Wonderful words of life.
right to give our thanks and prayers. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. You formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity, made covenant to be our sovereign God, and spoke to us through the prophets. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymns. Holy, 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 holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. Your Spirit anointed him to preach good news to the poor, to proclaim the release up to the captive, and the recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, and to announce that the time has come when you would save your people. He healed the sick, fed the hungry, and ate with sinners. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. When the Lord Jesus ascended, he promised to be with us always in the power of your word and the Holy Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body, given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples, and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. On the day you raised him from the dead, he was recognized by his disciples in the breaking of the bread and the power of your Holy Spirit. Your church has continued in the breaking of the bread and the sharing of the cup. And so in remembrance of these your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ is God. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here on all these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in the ministry to all the world, until Christ comes in final victory, and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with your Holy Spirit, in your Holy Church, our honor and glory is yours, Almighty God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Because there is one loaf, we who are many are one body, for we all partake of the one loaf. The bread which we are breaking is the sharing of the body of Christ. The cup over which we give thanks is the sharing of the blood of Christ. I invite you to come as we share of the body and blood of Christ.
give you thanks for this holy victory in which you have given yourselves to us. Grant that we may go into the world in the strength of your spirit to give ourselves for others. In the name of Jesus Christ, O Lord. Amen. Let us stand for our benediction and our hymn of dismissal, which will be hymn number 569. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. <coughs> Thank you.